cyber attacks are being timed with real world attacks. Microsoft finds two new Linux vulnerabilities and Google bolsters Android security. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for May 3rd, 2022. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. I have an announcement. I have a new Patreon perk to share with y'all. You know how I always cover about three headline stories in the show? Well, now Patreon supporters will be able to listen to a fourth story over on the Patreon page. The link to support and get access to perks, including this one, is down in the description below. And now onto the first news story. Even though folks are not talking about the war between Russia and Ukraine as much as they were about a month ago, that does not mean that it has ended. Cyber warfare is still occurring between the two countries and their allies. According to Microsoft, six separate Russian state-sponsored cyber groups launched more than 237 operations against Ukraine starting just before the invasion occurred. Now, these started on February 23rd and they continued through April 8th. This was a part of Microsoft's release of a special report which is titled An Overview of Russia's Cyber Attack Activity in Ukraine. Microsoft details how these attacks include targeting of critical infrastructure and citizens, with about 32% targeting government organizations and 40% targeting infrastructure, malware meant to cause downtime and disruption, espionage and intelligence campaigns, disinformation campaigns, and limited activity that involves other NATO member states. 38 of the attacks were file and data wipers. Now, most of these attacks stemmed from GRU, SVR, and FSB linked groups like Sandworm, Energetic Bear, UNC2452, and more. Some of the attacks seem to be coordinated assaults that are timed alongside military sieges and missile strikes. The company also named some of the malware being used in these attacks, many of which I have already mentioned on this show before. These these include Whispergate, Foxblade, Caddy Wiper, Double Zero, and so many more. Some of them overwrite data or encrypt it, or they make a machine unbootable. Others delete the data entirely. Microsoft believes continued attacks on Ukraine may increase in severity, so they provided some recommendations for mitigation, including leveraging anti-malware, endpoint detection, and identity protection solutions, using best practices for defenses like securing internet-facing devices and access, minimizing credential theft by implementing 2FA and detection tools. They also recommend setting up some kind of investigatory and recovery response plan. And you can read the full in-depth report via my links over on Patreon or on the Microsoft blog website. Microsoft has been on a roll this week. They also disclosed a group of Linux vulnerabilities in a report posted last week that explains how these can be exploited in attacks to escalate privileges and deploy malware from backdoors and infect devices with ransomware. The flaws are dubbed Nimbus Pwn with a P, and they are tracked as CVE 2022-29799 and 29800. Now the problem resides in Network D dispatch which is a component in Linux that sends connection status changes. They include directory traversal, symlink race, and time of check, time of use race condition issues. The researchers who found these flaws were listening to messages on the system bus, and this caused them to look into the code flow for Network D Dispatcher. They quickly discovered that the tool runs at boot with root privileges, and this daemon, or demon, I don't care how you pronounce it, uses a script called run hooks for state to detect the network state. But this script has security issues, including the three issues that I had listed. This directory traversal, that symlink race, and the TOC TOU race condition could be linked together to allow an attacker to escalate their privileges. Now the directory traversal flaw, that means the component does not sanitize the patch for the script correctly, so an attacker could exploit this to quote, break out of the base directory. The symlink race flaw means the processes use symbolic links, and the time of check, time of use race condition means an attacker could abuse the time frame between scripts being discovered and being run to replace the data without the operating system noticing a difference. An attacker could plant lots of malicious scripts 
steps during that time until one does succeed. And the researcher noted that their own test of this exploit worked after three attempts were made. The maintainer of Network Deed Dispatcher has already released updates to patch Nimbus Pwn, so Linux users should make sure to patch ASAP whenever those updates are rolled out for your specific distro. Big shout out to my Hush Puppy Perk level patrons, as usual, for sharing their fur baby photos and for the support. And I wanted to say thank you to Rob, Jeremy, and Autumn Dew for joining the Alliance on patreon.com slash threatwire. I have a four story to cover, which I mentioned previously, which is only available to the Patreon Alliance. So check that out if you are interested. But let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story, which is all about Android updates. Google has started sharing more information about Android 13 security with us, including this news for bug bounty hunters. So if you are a security researcher looking into Android 13 vulnerabilities via their vulnerability rewards program, you can actually get a 50% bonus on top of the regular reward payout through May 26. So that gives you a little less than a month to find any flaws with Android 13 beta 1 and get them reported. The max payout is $1.5 million for a remote code execution chain on the Titan M chipset. This does not include any vulnerabilities that are not exclusive to Android 13 or reproducible on other versions of Android. Google has paid out over $29 million in rewards since January 2010 when it first launched this program. Google has also launched a first look at the developer preview for the privacy sandbox for Android 13, including some peeks at the SDK runtime and Topics API. Their beta release should happen at the end of this year. The SDK runtime will run third-party code like ads and analytics, which show up in apps, in a dedicated sandbox while the Topics API was their recently updated tool for interest-based advertising without any cross-site or app tracking. Special thanks to cyberhound.tech on Patreon for sharing this very Google-centric story with me, which fits in perfectly with all the other Android and news that we got this week. Google is also rolling out their new data safety section for the Play Store and apps available through it. Now, Google announced this way back in May of 2021, so it should not come as a surprise to anyone, but this will include something similar to Apple's privacy nutrition labels, which give consumers a user-friendly way to quickly determine how apps are using their data. You will be able to see how apps are using your data, for what purpose, data handling, and if it's shared with any kind of third parties. This data safety section can also show you any app security practices, including information like if they encrypt data in transit, and if you can ask for data to be deleted. Developers will have to complete the section by July 20th and keep the information up to date if there are ever any changes. That means that you might see the section start to appear now, but devs might not actually fill it out until the deadline. Now, this section will work on a trusted system, assuming that developers will fill it out appropriately. So if an app developer lies whenever they fill out that information, Google can block the updates or remove the app entirely from the Play Store. So this section will not only give users a clearer picture of how their data is used, but it will also give Google a way to enforce a new policy. Do you want to see more tech videos from me? Check out my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Shannon Morse for everything from tech reviews to security tutorials. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe to Hack5 as well. I'm Shannon Morse, and I'll see you on the internet.